Schedule Master Quest episode 46. I'm your host for the episode, Nick. Hello. Tyler, pleased to meet you. Hello, Nick. It is my pleasure to meet you too. I am VRBot. Are you ready to assimilate? I mean, calibrate? I am ready to calibrate. Calibrating. Calibrating. Get a get a get a get a get a did you pass the I'm a robot test? I believe so. That captcha always bothers me. Sometimes I'll pass it. Sometimes I won't. I hate the one that that keeps saying, uh, keep cl- clicking on the thing until there's no more of the thing to click on. And yeah, then click it'll on the just... picture that has a car in it. It's like, that one has no, well, like well, a well, 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 no, those, those are fine because it just asks you to select the boxes. But then there's the ones like it'll show you the nine pictures. All right, all right select the squares on uh, with with the ducks in it until there are no more no more ducks so when you click on the one that has a duck it'll disappear and then another one will replace it right so you have to keep going until there's no more ducks in the fucking pictures and, and then those it turns bother into me. Fun. yeah yeah no that bothers me uh um, no no that's sad i'm so sorry yeah yeah hi hi tyler hi. hey i'm it doing has, it's, I'm, it's been two weeks tyler it, yeah it's, it's, i missed you too buddy i missed you so much that i wanted to get closer to you in a way that I didn't think possible until about eight and a half hours ago, baby. Holy right, shit, what is happening? So, so for reference for audio listeners, um, A, you're making a mistake by uh, sitting out on the uh, on the YouTube live recording. B, uh, Tyler is currently recording this, um, this episode in VR, so he can <laughs> see me on his PSVR headset. He has hooked it up to his PC, um, and it is like talking to... Um, uh, Robocop, but not Robocop. Oh, w- w- like when you're looking at me? Yeah. Prepare to take your parking ticket, villain. Uh, yeah, right now, uh, it pretty much looks like I'm in a super dark room. And for some reason, I have my TV about three inches away from my face. Which, uh, you know, you, do you call that virtual reality? I think so. And it sure. looks, it looks very nice. Uh, I mean, it, the uh, PSVR headset in general doesn't have the nicest quality compared to that of the Vive or the Oculus, but it's pretty far up there. And uh, this is weird. I uh, just for reference, I am using a uh, interesting program. It's called. Uh, sorry, I realize if I look away from the the mic, uh, it gets a little quieter. It's called Trinus. T R I N U S. Trinus. PSVR. Right now I'm using that as a program to not only be able to hook up my PSVR headset to the computer, I'm using it full on as a virtual reality system right now. And apparently it's also compatible with uh, a lot of uh, Steam VR games. For example, I was able to fire it up and it I was able to connect it through Steam VR. So I was able to access that and that's pretty sweet. I have yet to try it on any games. I have so far watched a lot of videos and enjoyed it. What, oh yeah. Oh yeah. What kind of videos, Tyler? Do you want to do you want to tell us about those those videos that you've been watching? Absolutely, Nick. The latest one I got to watch was actually by you. It was called Yu-Gi-Oh Virtual Reality. <laughs> okay, uh, Tyler. Let's talk about the videos you watched last night. Oh, okay. You see what Nick just tried to do there is throw a spear and i tried matrix dodging it but then he threw another one a smaller one that i didn't see in time it just slapped him <laughs> right in the what nuts he said yeah okay that's fair slapping the nuts with the second spear <laughs> mm. hey uh if you ever play D, things can happen so i uh i did test out uh virtual reality porn which right. was uh which was an experience which is, which is a must i i think yeah, it just it, it feels like it had to happen. Now, I unfortunately didn't get to uh, interact with it. I guess would be the proper term. I just wanted to see it for the uh, the science at this point because I knew sure. if there was mm-hmm. if there was going to be one place that offered me a uh, a free source of virtual reality videos, it was going to be you know my uh, my friendly local porn store and. Uh, so I got to see that. That was pretty wild. Uh, a couple of things that uh, I had some issues with and I'm currently having is uh, naturally the PSVR has the uh, the worst tracking of the three because it doesn't have any reference right now specifically. Uh, it's just looking and using using the, the gyroscope, which is doing right. great. But uh, 
a big problem with the PSVR, like over time, people uh, talked about this, you know, hooking up to the PlayStation 4 is uh, sometimes the tracking slowly starts to go off to the left or right, and you gotta, right, you know, it starts to drift. Yeah, 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 yeah. you gotta re uh, calibrate it. And uh, so right now, I'm looking forward, and my screen is uh, in the past 15, 20 minutes I've been using this proper is way over here. And uh, eventually I'm going to have to uh, either snap my neck or just close my eyes because uh, this will go kaput. And that, that's no good. Hey. Right, oh, uh, right. Anyways, uh, beyond that, I could use the uh, tracking with uh, my camera and all that stuff, but that's experimental at the moment. And uh, the program did cost about $20. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, if, if you want to give it a shot, it's like, oh, my PSVR could actually be used for something else besides, you know, PlayStation 4. That is the way to go. That's, not, that's not a bad price for the program. How much uh, is the PSVR? <laughs> when I mean, Nick, when I bought it, it was like $400. I think it's right, dropped right. down to around 300 at this point. Right. And, uh, whew. It, I mean, it, I, it, I, I believe I've talked about this on the show. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of VR. Oh, well, A, because I haven't tried it. Um, I don't like change. Um, and also, I don't think VR is um, super accessible um, yet. And until it is, it can. I don't think it can evolve to beyond a gimmick. Yeah, that, 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 that is fair. Now, there's been a couple of games that I'd like to say was uh, fantastic. Right. Uh, for example, Beat Saber, uh, Job Simulator to an mm-hmm, extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but thankfully it sounds like this is the year that uh sony's going to be pushing hard with a lot of vr games with their uh state of play being announced last week uh almost chock full of vr right in terms of iron man uh that's all i remember oh uh five nights at friday vr there is right. uh quite a few of them out but and 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 we'll be talking more about vr during the show but before we get into the irl stuff um there is something we must address tyler um i died last week you died last week. Yeah, um, it was it was a horrifying, it was a horrifying experience. Um, I'm so sorry. I prayed yeah. for you. I gave you my thoughts and prayers. Um, so so basically, as we were moving out, um, I stumbled into a, a nest of uh, very violent, vicious rats, and they had their way with me. They were able to immobilize me, capture me, and uh, they tore me down piece by piece. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, while we were moving, while me and my roommate were busy packing and cleaning up stuff, getting ready for the move, um, we we found a little surprise in one of his suitcases in his closet because my roommate's uh, room got hit with the mice the hardest. Damn. Um, and so there was one suitcase that he stored in there ages ago um, that had a tiny, a tiny little hole left in the with like with the zippers. Jesus. Um, and so as he was as he opened the suitcase to go through it because it was a bunch of old winter clothing um he found a mouse um a live mouse uh, at the tiny little house? thing uh no at the old place this is while we okay. were cleaning up and still getting ready. i didn't have a chance to talk about this because it hadn't happened yet right and i wasn't okay. here last week yeah, worried for a and second. so yeah so uh he opened up the suitcase found a little mouse he, he he screamed because mice are not particularly terrifying but in a case where it's wild mice and there's a bunch of them uh there is a chance for like disease yeah it's just it's, it's just scary having something like that unexpected happen so as i as i went into his room to help him deal with it and we were able to um as we were sorting through the clothes looking for the one mouse uh two more popped up from like the bottom of the suitcase um the one the, as we were able as we were emptying out the clothes uh from the suitcase the one mouse that we saw at the start managed to get away and was running free in our in, in the house um but we were able to close up the suitcase take it to the balcony and then just let gravity do the work by overturning the suitcase over the side of our balcony mind yeah. you i'm not one to sit and uh, do intentional harm to animals um but we were on the first floor so it's not like they were gonna uh get in uh, any, any serious injuries and it's like grass, right versus concrete because uh that could be bad sorry like did you throw them into the grass off the balcony or did you uh not look down to check no we didn't look down to check because as we as we opened it up to try and get the uh the two other mice to get out three more popped up and so there's a total of six in that little suitcase. And so at that point, we were just more concerned uh, about the fact that management hadn't done anything for six months. And mm-hmm. we just wanted to get done and leave this hellhole. So, um, yeah. I totally respect that. Also, uh, Axel Bullet 019, a.k.a. my uh, one of my other friends, Nick, 
actually the person who borrowed my headset up until about a you know a few weeks ago uh he would like to note that this looks ridiculous well, well that that's the point right i mean it might I, vr headset looks ridiculous <laughs> ah, uh, fool you might think it looks ridiculous but you have not experienced the power that he has i mean this is amazing <laughs> I'm sitting here in an IMAX theater talking with my friend do, recording a podcast. Okay, maybe not IMAX theater. Like a, a normal Dolby sound theater. Like the sound on this is amazing. Right. No right. echo. No echo. Huh. I wonder why. All right. So so uh, aside from the VR stuff, Tyler, how how's your week been? How's your how's how's things been since we last did this together? So <sighs> Couple of things that happened. Right. Uh, what, I, I made a uh, small financial uh, venture with my wife, my wife, and uh, we decided that we were going to drop twenty two hundred dollars for a uh, nice new bed. Okay. So as it turns out, uh, doing belly flops and pile drivers on the old mattress was actually doing damage to it, and uh, you know the spring started <gasps> sagging and stuff. I know, right? It's like would have thought. If, if I can't do, you know, the tombstone on my wife, uh, then <laughs> what, what's the point of having a bed? And so uh, there's a point to where, you know, her back started hurting. Uh, the, uh, one of us started, like, slinking in the center off to the, like, we're going to fall off because we're being slid off. And uh, that that's no good. No, yeah. no, nobody wants that. And so uh, we went over to our local mattress store. We had a couple. We uh, looked at one. We tested ourselves on a uh, like a diagnostic bed, if you will. And uh, the guy was trying to be nice as uh, shit about it. But he's like, hey, uh, you see all these spots where it shows your body? And, you know, it shows my wife in like uh, green, yellow, orange. And then you see like my ass at like super dark red. And my back is super dark red. It's like, yeah, mm, I think you might need a firm mattress. And he's trying so hard to say, hey, you're fat as shit. You need to get a, a firm mattress. And it's like, right. okay, that's that that that's fair. Thank you. Uh, I was about to name him, but I probably shouldn't. Uh, Kyle, I'm just going to say Kyle. Kyle. Kyle did a great job. He did a fantastic job. And so uh, we tried a bunch of mattresses. We found this nice one. Uh, we couldn't see prices. They were hidden. They, they, they hide them until uh, they're ready. Like we're saying, we like this one. He's like, oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play the prices really high. And he flips, oh, sorry. Uh, he flips the tag and it's like 3000 like Yeah, $3,000. I'm like, oh, I just wanted to put like 1200 down at the most. 3000 And, you know, he's like, Actually, today's your lucky day. And I got really suspicious really quick here, Nick, when he said shit like that. Because that's right. like Youth Cards Man slogan right there. He's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this one's actually the cheapest right now because <laughs> it's 33% off where it has the biggest deal going on. So it's only about twenty one seventy five, And it's like, hmm. And I look at my wife and my look, wife looks at me and I realize that I'm about to own a bed that's more expensive than my car. <laughs> and uh, that is just bewildering, Nick. Uh, well, well, I mean, as as bewildering as it is, I was actually talking to somebody about this a um, uh, few days ago. Where if uh, we've never understood the uh, the the point of putting money into like a supercar, yeah, um, especially if you don't really have the money and you're just trying to put up like a, a lifestyle just for appearances' sake, um, rather put that money into something that will directly impact the quality of your life, such as betting. Like if I had money, I would be buying thousand thread count fucking sheets all all week. Uh, or, Hell yeah, all week, but, but you know what I mean. Like uh, like pillows, mattresses, bedding, all of this actually improves you know your quality of life, your sleep. Um, so I don't you know I don't think that's a bad purchase. So uh, I when my old bed it used to be a, a normal spring mattress, and then it would have uh, a pillow top cover over the top of it. And so we would uh, get like the super soft trying to sleep in the cloud feeling. But the problem with that is, uh, A, the springs were, you know, going the hell and back. Right. And it was not helping us keep our posture at night, which was messing with our uh, bodies in general, pulling right. muscles, pushing spots in the back. And uh, I could be wrong on this, but judging by the way he was trying to describe it to me, if you are a lighter person who has proper posture, the softer, the better uh, in terms of the bed. But if you're having uh, trouble sleeping, the firmer, the better. And it's like, 
I thought I was going to get like a memory foam mattress and just lay down on it and just sink in. And then I'm going to sleep like, you know, a, a child on NyQuil or something like that. Right. NyQuil. Thank you. Uh, me. So, uh, yeah, this mattress is, I guess, half spring, half memory foam ish on the uh, top. And uh, it is firm as shit, despite the uh, memory foam. Uh, first night I pulled the muscle in the back, but I think that's because I wasn't used to sleeping on a board with cloth on top of it. Right. Uh, second night, slept fantastic. So I am baking on the idea that this is going to be a good venture. I hope so. Uh, beyond that, I, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I talked about it on the podcast last week, but you weren't here. Uh, I hooked up my second solid state drive, uh, or at least I rehooked it up. Apparently it was already hooked up to my computer, but computers sometimes don't instantly recognize hard drives or stuff connected uh, in a way to where you can use it instantly. So I had to go to it and uh, assign it a uh, disk drive number or a letter. Right. And after that, I had 500. Nick here knows that sometimes I'll have trouble with podcasts because I'll be running low in space and all the temporary files uh, consumes a lot of gigabytes. Mm hmm. And holy shit, having 500 gigabytes to mess with was so nice. I started downloading Steam games like a motherfucker. <laughs> games I probably won't even play. Uh, hell, I, if I had near Automata on the PC, I might have installed that too. But I thankfully, I don't have that. I don't even think it's out on PC. I'm pretty sure it's PS4 only. Where oh, it it's out on PC. What do you mean? Oh, it's okay. on PC and Xbox. Ah, oh, I, I can't tell if you're trolling me or not. No, I'm not. It came a Game of the Year edition came out on Xbox last year. Oh, did it? Okay, cool. Yeah, sometime in October or November. I think we covered it on the show, Tyler. Sure. I, I believe you. <laughs> it, it sucks because you got some things like uh, Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice where it's like, I wish this goes on everything you can find so people can enjoy it. But then you got fucking games that are like The Plague, which is near Tomato, where it's like, oh, fuck, now these people are going to experience it. And hopefully they like it. But honestly, I hope you get it for 10 bucks. Otherwise, you're screwing yourself over. But uh, yeah, that's been my week, Nick. Uh, what about you? Um, well, obviously, I, I wasn't here because I died, but also because I was moving. Um, Resurrection's a bitch. Uh, coming back from the dead is no easy task. Uh, did you take your one uh, long rest before you get out of your fatigue? Yeah, I had to, I had to sacrifice 72 virgins, 6 goats, and 1 uh, bonsai tree. Fuck? Th- th- that was not in the uh, <laughs> the description of the spell cast, but... Well, because somebody forgot to read the fine print, so... You know, yeah, if there's happens. one thing I'm, I'm very good at ignoring the fun. Who <laughs> rates the term of service when you're installing something like resurrection? Come on, people. Well, it matters when you have to go find 72 virgins. But anyways, moving on. I don't want to drone about that. Um, the move was challenging. Um, we started at nine in the morning on a Sunday um, and we finished at 2 a.m on a Monday um, because I had friends to help us finish up the final bit of packing and load up onto the truck um, but then beyond that it was just me and my roommate and we have a lot of things so we did we did um, we did the thing where there's a company that provides plastic moving boxes for a fee for like a week and, okay. and they'll deliver to your current place and then they'll pick it up from your new place um, and so these boxes they're pretty durable but they get really heavy and we just filled them with all of our crap oh, um, and, man. Uh, you did the thing where it's like if there's space it got to fit and you just pretty much ignore the, the possibility much. of things might getting heavy um and so getting things off the truck was a challenge um so so it's a basement suite right so you if you're looking at the front of the house you go along the right side there's a little fence um and then you go down a little slope and then you go down a few sets of stairs and then there's our front door. Um, and so to save time, we moved everything off the truck that was parked in the driveway um, to down the little slope right above the steps. And at that point, we were exhausted. And then we went to Ikea for a little bit, got a few things, came back and we said, fuck it, we're not going to do this. And so we didn't do it until about 10 p.m. at night. We're like, fuck it, let's just do it, get it over with. So we did it. And then we were dead the next day. And then I spent I spent all of that night setting up my room so that I'd be able to get back to schoolwork immediately, get back to doing this immediately. Um, we I was smart enough to book uh, an appointment with my ISP um, early on. So the next day I had Internet again. Um, 
Good it deal. was just it was just challenging, but I would argue like 70% of uh, our place is set up now. Like we got rid of a lot of things. We got rid of a lot of furniture. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to take some time to fully settle in, but my room is all set. Um, I, I mean, yeah. you're kind of breaking my heart here. I don't get to see that poster anymore. Uh, which poster? Uh, it was like oh, red and nuts. Yes. Yeah. No, it was time. You got rid of it. Yeah. I got rid of it. Just tore it off the wall and yeah. Nick, I would have happily took it back with me back here this, to the States. Well, no, like, I had to get it off the wall, and the moment I tried to get it off the wall, it tore. I'm like, well, there goes, there goes that. Oh, no. It looks yeah. like we'll have to redecorate. Oh, yeah, that's the plan. So, the like, the, you know, audio listeners can't see it, but this wall behind me is completely blank. I do have my um, little bookshelf thing set up where I do have my pops and some school supplies um, but there's a whole wall behind me that's completely blank and I want to get it set up um, in so, terms of things getting damaged during the move we only lost maybe two cups and uh, two plates um, and, bad. and a painting got destroyed because Ooh. a box fell on the painting Ooh. and I was upset because it was grouped with other paintings and one of them was my sister's fortunately my sister's painting wasn't damaged at all the other painting that I really liked it. Uh, I really liked and I got it for 30 euros on a trip to Germany that I took a few years ago um, and it was a painting, this beautiful old painting of um, a lone monk standing on like a rocky uh, shore like seashore and there's like waves crashing and you can see like it blends really nice into the horizon um, and it makes me really sad but at least it wasn't my sister's painting because that would have made me super sad that is very important there is uh one painting i have in the house now that i got about a year and a half ago uh it is i believe somewhere around 90 years old right. it is uh probably like a four foot wide three foot uh high uh mural of a uh, a mountain village and the reason why I have it specifically is because my great grandmother had it ever since I was born, much longer than that, in fact. And so when my great grandmother had to sell the house, uh, they were going to toss the painting. And now I have that in the house. And I would be broken if that painting were to be destroyed because that right. represents my, you know, that is the last piece of old family home that uh, is now, you know, in some rich young couple's hands, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, with my sister's painting, uh, I went. Ba- uh, was, this is when I went back home, maybe two and a half years ago, three years ago, um, a few days before I left because she paints with acrylic paint, so it takes time for paintings to dry. I think it was like three days before I left. I'm like, all right, paint me something, and she's like, what? I'm not gonna have enough time. I'm like, yeah, all right, just paint me something, and she did. And I don't know if I've ever posted a picture on social media, and maybe I will after this. Um, but it's one of the favorite things that I have in my possession. I got it framed. I never put it up at the old place because I knew we were going to move at some point and I didn't want to waste such a beautiful thing on those shitty walls. Um, but that's moving. Uh, we're all set up. Everything went well. Um, in terms of if school, I could yes. Ask, uh, how much retail space do you think you have between your shelf there and uh, whatever is to your left? Um, so, I- actually, quite a lot. Um, okay, so you got a lot, like. Do you think yeah, uh, that, and that chest of drawers is going to be going? Um, I thought I needed that, it. Is that a muddy Pikachu? Do you, oh, don't you want to throw that through the washer? That's an EV, Tyler. You oh, got I mean, very well. That's an EV. If you want to, uh, let me turn my thumb the right way, uh, clean it up and make it yellow and proper like that Pikachu back there, then uh, maybe you'll uh, have some good taste. But I respect your decision. Uh, if you want to have a Pikachu uh, can't learn any fighting moves, EV can learn dig, EV can kick Pikachu's ass. Pikachu learns, I believe, double kick in uh, Hey You Pikachu. Yeah, we're not talking about Hey You Pikachu. We're talking about the core RPG. Isn't this I've also never played Hey You Pikachu. Hey You Pikachu and Hey You Eevee. All right, let's go Pikachu. Sorry. Oh, let's go. Can Pikachu learn double kick and let's go? I for some reason they uh since they wanted Pikachu to be profitable in use uh, against like Rock, they let it learn a fighting move. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Oops. Um. It's it's weird, but you know, whatever. I mean, you think Iron Tail would do the trick? Just let him learn Iron Tail early, but yeah, that would make more sense. Um, especially, it would also be more canon. It, I mean, I'm trying to think uh, how canon it would be versus you know the anime slash cartoon. I mean, I, I, it would be. That's what, that's what I mean. Like in terms in in relation to the anime, it would be a lot more canon because yes. he uses uh, you know Pikachu there uses Iron Tail. A lot and that game is about as mainstream as it gets so i would Pretty have much. to say that they'd probably follow the cartoon versus like the original yellow game which yep. 
Yeah. No. Okay. Anyways, you, you were saying though, I cut you off. No, um, I, I was just going to say like school's been getting busy. Um, a lot of projects have concluded. Um, I say school's been getting busy, but school's been busy since fucking March. Um, I haven't really <laughs> slept properly. Um, uh, if it's okay with you, Tyler, I'm going to quickly just talk about one of my projects very briefly yeah, in terms of, of if, if you go to emeraldhorizon.net, you'll be able to see the website that I created for this project and the two videos I made all on my own. Um, Yes. We'll, we'll slip a link in the uh, the show notes too. Um, Emerald Horizon. It is uh, it is one of my. I, I put so much work into this, and there's so many things I could have done better, especially with the videos. But I am not a cinematographer. I am not a video editor. So I did the best I could with my limited uh, knowledge, uh, limited technical skills, um, because I had to do so much. But anyways, there's that. Uh, there's going to be a lot more pictures of all the other projects uh, that's coming through um, over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm taking a Foundations of Game Design course where we actually had to make several board games or at least card games, physical games throughout uh, the course. And we are now at our final showcase where um, we're getting our game properly printed, professionally printed um, by a company. I can't remember what they're called, but they're in uh, Washington. In Vancouver, Holy shit, that's so awesome, man. Um, and so we go pick it up next week. Um, and we're gonna have a showcase with some high school students. They're gonna play test our game. Uh, I ho- I really hope it goes well. We love our game. We've seen everybody else in our class love our game. Our professor said we had probably the most the 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 game that fit the criteria the best. Um, and and honestly, I think we might be able to take it to market like start a kickstarter and actually like sell this game so we'll see nice nice um, i don't want to say anything about the game yet until i have approval from uh um, our full team but um you got my it, vote i appreciate that tyler hey, um, i'm, I'm technically part cool. of the marketing uh prototype team okay oh yeah 100 percent uh oh yeah like, God, we still have i get like 0.5 oh, okay. of the vote for 0.5 uh percent <sighs> But but yeah, so that's that's really exciting. That's happening uh, because I'm I'm just discovering more and more things that, um, like in terms of like job roles that I fit in and that I enjoy being a part of. Like I may not, I've never thought of myself as being a game designer, um, but like thinking of game mechanics and how people can enjoy a card game, um, and taking inspiration from all the different card games that we played throughout the semester was really fun. Um, so so yeah and then uh, so that's been school uh that was my move um i'm back here we're doing an episode together again after two weeks um the last thing i did want to quickly touch on is um i'm, I'm going to counseling again um i haven't been to counseling in about a year and a half two years almost maybe um and you know just just mentioning it just not for um anything any specific reason just because i think it's important that people that that it's it's normalized um you know um, like this is a thing that people need sometimes, and if you need it, you should go talk to somebody. Respectable. Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see this. I, I honestly didn't. Okay, I didn't see this section. I thought, hmm. Ooh, yeah, the the bombshell, huh? Yeah, I I put that at the end because I didn't see that. I guess I must have missed it with how late the notes uh, notes were last night. All right, uh, are you ready to talk about this? Uh, sure. Yes, let's do this. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what is the date right now? As as of recording, uh, as we're recording this, it is the sixth of April. Okay. Um, and uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, virtual reality calendar bring up. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, <laughs> so in three uh, weeks. In three weeks, on the dot actually, uh, April twenty seventh. Uh, from April twenty seventh to May fifth, I am gonna be officially traveling over to canada to go hang out with nick for a week oh canada i just say uh I, you want to have a competition oh say no, that's all i know don't let's not even start it's okay yeah I, I was gonna forget <laughs> the like three words after that uh so yes i end up successfully getting a passport for the u.s i got all the criteria and everything filled out i got plane tickets all set up I'm slightly nervous because uh, I don't know where I'm sleeping officially yet because I don't know if I'll be sleeping on the floor or if I'll be, you know, maybe I'll take Nick's bag. I don't know. Or we can share and we'll uh, show you how casual this master quest can be. Uh, 
2019 people open your minds anyways uh yes i'm gonna be heading over to canada and we yeah. are gonna be doing some fun shit yeah it's gonna be fun i'm excited uh it's gonna be right uh like i finished school on the 23rd of april um and then i start on the 6th of may so tells you from the 27th to the 5th and so it's gonna be a nice uh fun time all around i think um this will be the first time i've entered uh entered canada now i do have an enhanced license which means i could have went to canada by land or sea but since nick is all the way over on the west coast of canada over in uh the vancouver area i wanted to fly versus the 30 40 hour drive right and that required the passport so not only is this going to be my first time in canada i'm probably going to be in the most i'd like to think the most hipster part of canada i could possibly think of i i think you'd be correct i i mean versus toronto maybe i guess but well Tor- toronto's more um lively i think i would like in toronto more to new york um okay. in terms of like if you had to relate a place uh to to another uh vancouver is very much like seattle portland um, i would say it. there's no close to fucking seattle where, yeah yeah they get the uh the heavy uh biosphere of vegan influence yeah they're, they're way too close they're going to be affected it's it's like civ 5 where one city has uh can spread religion by being too close and have high influence that's right. seattle right there it's like mm, do you really want to have cheese well, I mean, it's not surprising boring. considering the fact that um, uh, we have a lot more Starbucks than Tim Hortons here. Um, well, I mean, I, I Tim really, Hortons is... Wait, Tim Starbucks? Hortons, Tim Hortons was Canadian, right? Um, yeah. And then it got bought out by Burger King, but we have a lot more Starbucks here compared to Tim Hortons purely because of our proximity to Seattle, I think. At least that's my theory. That's that's so weird. You, you think that Tim Hortons, to like by law, would have to have more of them there you you think but then you know starbucks being based off see based in seattle starting there i think and because we are also known as sister cities seattle and vancouver considering how close our weather is right it's like 200 and something plus days of um according to the locals miserable fucking rain throughout the year i love the rain yeah that explains uh the whole uh i do remember hearing about that through the uh twilight book series i believe that's where uh <laughs> squidward i mean edward uh can you imagine if Squidward was the vampire antagonist that Bella fell in love with? <laughs> Bella, where's my crabby panty? Oh, Squidward, bite me now! <laughs> what? Uh, anyways, uh, yes. Uh, apparently, it's supposed to be super rainy and uh, humid. Yeah. It's the time over there. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be a good time. Uh, uh we we talked about it a little bit. Uh, Tyler, what what are your main things that you want to get out of this trip? Well, Nick got me heavily excited because I'll be showing up there on the 27th and uh, we'll be, you know, I'll probably pass out from jet lag or something like that and be ready for the 28th, which is uh, Sunday. And holy shit, Nick, uh, you know, Avengers will be coming out on the 27th. Oh, we're fucking going for the Avengers. I'm, uh, I'm going to be booking gonna be tickets. One of the first thing I want to do is go see fucking Endgame. Three hours of... Hot, like uh, how does, all right tyler how does how does avengers endgame and imax sound like like i mean like a good time if i could look at a trailer of it right now and just have it in my vr i'm right. pretty sure i'd have a rough idea what to expect <laughs> but but yeah we're gonna uh like that first uh night uh, day after he arrives we're going for avengers we're gonna be heading out and hitting the town um some of the few nights uh my roommate hopefully will be able to join us if he's not too busy with work um we're gonna be doing i have some uh, a few creative plans for when mm-hmm. tyler's here um and i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let you all be surprised by that if they ever come to fruition can um, i ask me a single question yes Will any of them uh, threaten my marital sanctity? <laughs> that that'll be that'll that'll be down. That that's your decision. That'll uh, be down to a choice you'd have to make. I can't okay. promise anything. It's not it's nothing that'll be forced on you, Tyler. Thank you. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hookers are like in Vancouver. <laughs> um, and neither hey, do I. It's good looking. Okay. Eh? <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's going to be a good time. Hey, Cody, I'll make you do me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be nice to be able to basically do nothing. And by nothing, I mean, not have to do schoolwork for about a week before I go back to school. 
Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to enjoy that, too. It's going to be pretty nice. The, the one thing I will tell you for sure is that Tyler will be sitting in a corner uh, with, with a knife or some sort of weapon in his hand while I play Breath of the Wild because he has to ensure that I at least oh, touch that game while he's here. I mean, I believe the discussion between you, Brandon, and I was you have to play like four or five hours every single night uh, <laughs> in order for yeah. you to beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> And he also so, uh, pointed out that you can beat the game in five minutes if you're that good, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go attack Ganon just head up. I want to go explore the fucking world. Uh, th- th- that is totally fair, and I respect that. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to we're gonna keep you guys updated on what's going to happen. The the wild? I will... will you, Tyler! Uh, when I'm there. When, I, when I'm there. Would you oh, actually oh, yeah. play? I mean, I'll play, yeah. <laughs> you, you sounded really, really convincing. All right, listen, listen. I've been getting four hours of sleep consistently. Look into my VIR, or VR eyes, Nick. Look at the single unlit LED. I've been getting four hours of sleep every night since that, 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 that could be four hours of Breath of the Wild, Nick. You are fucking up hard here. <laughs> I want to be able to enjoy the game during a time where I'm not constantly worried about when the next deadline is or when do I have to leave the house and go to a project meeting next. So I will get to it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, so we will, we will keep you updated over what's going to happen over the next few weeks because if Tyler does arrive on the 27th, that is one of our recording days. And then he leaves uh, the next Sunday, so that's another recording day. Um, and I don't want to take a risk with having scuffed quality on my end because I only have the one mic set up. Um, so we'll figure something out and we'll make sure that we, we're we not, these are episodes we're not skipping whatsoever. You see, um, what we'll do is that we're going to get a uh, double-sided rotating chair and <laughs> one of us will be near the mic and when the other is ready to speak, we'll use our legs and travel across the floor in a circle. Then it'll be the other person. And then I can just edit out all the, uh, the silence. All this, in between. All- <laughs> but I will leave in the wheel scuffling of as, as we rotate every single time. Or wheel scuffling in like as a constant noise in the background. That is also acceptable. I was going to say another thing we could do in that situation is we are constantly spinning. So we can only say like three words and we just try to complete each other's sentences for an hour and a half and see how that works. I'm okay. All right, so that's. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Tyler's visiting. Uh, it's going to be in Vancouver soon. It's going to be a good time. And holy shit. In Canada, in, anything in, is possible. In, in traditional casual Master Quest style, we still haven't even gotten the video games yet on a video game podcast. No, we haven't. We kind of fucked up, didn't we? Just a little bit, but that's okay. Because it's been a long time since we've been together. Yes, I miss you too. <laughs> we are going to make this our end game. This is going to be three hours long. <laughs> Uh, I can't do that because I have to leave for school in a few hours. But let's start off with Tyler. What have you been playing? So uh, I would like to say I'm going to keep this short about uh, the first game on the list here, but I will not. So Ocarina of Time Randomizer. Let's have a little talk. Uh, For those who have been listening, they know that I've been really getting into the idea of playing Ocarina of Time with everything randomized. And it is fantastic. Now, there's been a couple of shortcomings that's been bugging me throughout the uh, the playthroughs. I have beaten it. I, I, as of last week, I have done my first complete playthrough and completed it. However, uh, I was really upset because I saw people playing it online in a quality that was much nicer than mine. And originally, I had thought, I realized that uh, with the headset on, it presses into my nose. and I, I start to feel like I'm actually Squidward. Uh, anyways... <laughs> I see people streaming it and it looks great compared to mine. I'm like, what the fuck? What am I doing wrong here? So I I start jumping down a rabbit hole. I come into the the wild conclusion that while I was playing the N64 1.0 version of Ocarina of Time, which is the very original version of Ocarina of Time, there were several updates later on that improved quality, censored some shit. And I thought they were playing the the GameCube version that came out for either the uh, Master Collection or the, the uh, sorry, the collector's edition or whatever it's called that has a bunch of Zelda games or the Master Quest version that came out for the GameCube. And so I started going to a bunch of bullshit like uh, how to convert a N64 file into a WAD for the virtual Wii console and all that shit. And it was a horrible rabbit hole. As it turns out, as it turns out, I just needed to raise the graphic quality on the emulator. I, I, was, I was just playing at the lowest thing possible, and I just had to raise it up a little bit, and suddenly it looked fantastic, and I felt like a fool. And uh, 
I had to learn Python to use the uh, the latest uh, developer edition of the randomizer so I could add cooler shit, such as uh, randomized heart color. Uh, you can do entrance randomizer where you could walk in one house and it's a different area. Uh, for example, I could walk uh, into Saria's house in the Kiri Woods and it turns into the fucking fishing hole for some reason. And it, it, it's pretty wild. Uh, Deku Tree was the Shadow Temple. But uh, yeah. I've been working on that. I got a GameCube controller, which I would show you, but I have no idea where it is because I'm in this horrible uh, virtual landscape. And uh, I've been given another shot. I'm going to try to see if I can beat it in under eight hours. That's my main goal. Beat nice. it under eight hours. If I do that, then I'll consider it proficient. Not a pro, but proficient. Uh, after that, I played and beat Spider-Man. And nice. I have a lot of feelings. Now, Nick, the reason why I ended up picking Spider-Man was because, A, I had buyer's remorse with uh, Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. And B, uh, when I last hung out with uh, my other friend, Nick, uh, he showed me some Spider-Man. And, like, I got some first-hand experience with it, and it was so nice. I, I ended up making the job by saw for 35 bucks. I, uh, you know, I was like, oh, you know, 35 bucks, that's worth right. it. Uh, the 15 hours that I put in or so... Uh, I do not regret a single moment of it. There's times where it's like, oh, man, this is going to take a minute. But doing, like, you know, stealthy missions where you're slowly trying to pick off bad guys and stick them to light posts and stuff, even the the more time-consuming stuff, I, you know, enjoyed. It, it was weird because Spider-Man is the first game in a very, very long time where I started doing collectibles. There's stuff right. in the mini-map. Like, I, I, I don't like doing side quests. I like to do the main story. Maybe if something's interesting, like a cool power-up, I'll do that. This is the first time I was like, oh, man, that's there on the map. I could just go there since Breath of the Wild, Nick. And it, 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 was, it was just I, I I want to sit down right now, even after beating the game, just to keep playing do, and doing more stuff because there's so much excitement. Uh, the ending of that story, which, you know, I won't spoil, even though it's been, you know, six months or so. Right. Uh, it, it, it was a heartbreaker essentially it, it definitely was designed to make you <laughs> feel the cold empty heart that was once you know in your chest it beat once again I fucking grinched over that thing like uh, it, it was like oh man it, it was sad but it also provides a lot of opportunity for future story and I'm excited to either try the DLC or see what they have for Spider-Man 2 and uh, lastly I did kind of talk about this before but just in case uh, with the GameCube controller, I decided to give Paper Mario a thousand year door, which uh, with uh, the agreement of our former uh, co-host Cam uh, is the best Paper Mario game for sure. And some reason when I said this full title to you originally, Nick, uh, you were kind of scared by it, like a three off. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, well, well, with the Mario game, not that not that Mario doesn't like the Mario universe has never had dark themes, but like in general, even the titles of their games or like the aesthetic style of their games have not been ominous or scary or spooky. But then seeing something like Paper Mario, the thousand year door was like, holy shit, shit's got serious. <laughs> Mario Ghostbuster now? What's going on? I, I'm trying to think of uh like something with Mario in the name that was like not like happy go lucky kind of stuff. I, Mario Odyssey, no, well, I mean that's more explorative. You're like you're having fun. You're going to yeah, like place. even even like even to me, uh, you know, uh, a Nintendo pleb, like I know that Mario in general is not like a spooky, scary doomsday aesthetic, and so yeah. having like the thousand year door in the name was like holy shit, shit got serious. Like uh, the closest thing I can think of is like Luigi's Mansion, but that's Luigi. And uh, and it's uh, with a totally not so scary looking ghost. True. Like I'm, uh, I'm also thinking of stuff like uh, Paper Jam. Uh, yeah, but Paper Jam's like funky, you know. It's like Bowser's Inside Story. Yeah, they they always try to go for like a little laugh versus like, oh shit, what up? Yeah, so th that's why like this this seemed just a little bit out of place in 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 a lineup. Like it's something you'd pick out immediately. And it, it is like the game itself is pretty out of the place because it has the I would like to think that the it has the best script writing that any Paper Mario game has ever had. I don't know what the hell that they gave to the script writers like cocaine, Red Bull, hopefully money. Uh <laughs> they, they they did a, a damn good job and it was the best that we have i know right it's like nintendo gives them industrial level glue the stuff but it's like will i at least get my 11 dollars an hour it's 15 minimum here in Cal and they're like 
we'll talk about it later. Sniff the glue, get right. In. Like they, they provide them the necessities, but not the quality of life, man. I shouldn't say that. I will not slander Nintendo. None of that is true. But the way they say shit in this game, it, it's beautiful. I, you know, I, I remember Paper Mario. Paper Mario, the original one, did okay. Super Paper Mario, the uh, third game for the Wii, was mediocre with a couple of good moments here and there. But Thousand Year Door, the conversation in that, it's it's almost like ten out of ten every single time something's said. It's nice, right. and uh, I'm hoping to play more of it. But then uh, I always get pulled into like Ocarina of Time or something like that. So we'll see what happens. What about you, Nick? Uh, what what have you been playing, my man? Right, but, uh, like before I talk about me, um, I know with the uh, Legend of Zelda randomizers. Um, I, I think I mentioned this maybe like a month and a half ago, two months ago. I was watching okay. one of my uh, 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 streamer King Italian play. Um, I believe it was. Uh, a link to the past randomizer and they're mm. talking about and which which fascinates me when they were talking about how the randomizers work where you have a seed and each seed um basically starts a puzzle in the game like sure everything has been randomized all the locations have been randomized but there is no uh there 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 is a path there is a path a logical path that you have to not maybe not logical but there's a clear puzzle that you have to solve that will allow you to finish the game it's not like you'll ever get stuck anywhere people who play this uh the path we call it just logic like uh, we're trying to follow logic because uh, for example in ocarina of time if you get bonds in like one of your first chests uh the game's logic or the randomizer's logic is trying to tell you that most likely the next piece of the puzzle that you'll need to get is something that you can use bombs for it's kind of like a, right. a bread trail of sorts so what you're saying is completely within reason uh you can set it up to where it's in a way to where there's no logic which is very dangerous because it's potentially in, not completable and that is that that breaks it man you you, you right. definitely want to be able to you know complete it and right. so yeah logic is nice yeah no it's it's fascinating how that works and uh, i can definitely appreciate the um um I want to say like the art style that it is because uh, honestly as a whole thinking of it as a puzzle and presenting it that way and playing it that honestly seems like a um just a very nice engaging challenge um now in terms with of video games on my, completing it too i mean with the, the possibility um, of completing it yeah like it feels like an even bigger accomplishment on top of a game that you already love yes uh, like the idea that there is a program that can make thousands of different ways for you to enjoy it's like a you know turning your game into a thousand piece virtual jigsaw puzzle right right and, yeah it's, it's amazing that they're able to do something like that um so now with the games that i've been playing um i mean i have my standards i actually haven't tyler i haven't touched destiny in over three weeks now oh man are you finally gonna break free is this your big break probably not but yeah it feels good for the moment Yes, like, I, I, have, I have a break. Let's keep see if these. Um, <laughs> um, I haven't touched Destiny in a week in in a long time. Uh, played a little bit of Overwatch with friends. Um, played a little bit of uh, Wizards of Legend when I didn't have internet for a few hours and I couldn't sleep, so I I just plugged in my controller and went at it. Um, but the biggest game I think over the last few weeks that's made the most impact on me is GTA Five. Mm. Now I've that never played a GTA game for sure. The cure. Like that is the first step in uh, D two A. Uh, Destiny two anonymous. Destiny two avoid anonymous. anonymous okay. The, um, you're like, hi, I haven't touched Destiny two in three weeks, and then we're all supposed to go, you know, collab. <laughs> hi, my hi. name is Nick, and I'm 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 a warlock main. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. <laughs> um. So. So what's pulled me in is, uh, into GTA now is probably the same thing that's pulled a lot of people in, and that's the GTA role playing on Twitch. Um, and it's Tyler, it's some of the most entertainment I've had in, in a long time in terms of pure, uh, viewer enjoyment. Um, because you have all these different characters. It's basically, it's, it's basically a TV show. Um, but you get to watch the perspective of each and every different character whenever you want. Um, but it is very, very not user friendly because it's like coming into a show seven seasons in and asking people who are these characters um so it took me a while to figure out kind of who's who what's everybody's uh character like what they're trying to do um because the the, the fascinating thing about these uh role players as well is that they're not always trying to be like you know um 
uh do things that'll make them happy like the, like so my favorite streamer to watch right now is moon moon right who's uh, who was a former like full-time uh overwatch uh streamer um yeah. and he plays a a rapper called young dad um and and he has a character sheet that he references constantly on young deb's strengths weaknesses character traits um where he'd be like all right young deb is very naive um he's he's very he's very loving but he's super selfish so you always constantly see him fuck up like every other day he's going to jail because he tried to rob a jewelry store but gets caught um he's constantly gambling and so he's always out of money he's always broke his his nickname's <laughs> young debt so they're not so that's been the nice thing is they're not always trying to make it like uh they're not all trying to play protagonists. They're not all trying to be like, you know, get a happy they're to live their lives. Man. Yeah. They're just, they're living their lives in an over exaggerated, realistic manner. And, and it's just been entertaining to watch. And some of the best role players are the cops um, on the servers because they do a fantastic fucking job. They have like proper, they, they like, they know the codes, they know the, 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 um, the procedures they know you know when they arrest somebody they read them their rights but what boggles me is that uh what, what confuses me is that some of them play actual cops in real life so so like i really That's don't awesome. holy shit no, no no it's awesome and i'm not trying to take anything like we're not we're not starting any kind of discussion here i'm just uh, like from a from a from a uh like a 24 hour like kind of like your day to day kind of thing like i it just confuses me that you play a cop like you are a cop in real life you do that eight hours a day then you come home and to relax and unwind you play a cop more right and i feel like the only reason they would do that is because playing a cop in vr um sorry in role play um is is there's no risk um you don't have to you know constantly worry about uh your safety or anything you can go out there and do your job and like the chances are like it, you probably enjoy being a cop which is why you're role playing a cop and so you get to go and just kind of like be a cop without having to like do anything to anybody or have anything done to you and which that's the only that, that's the only thing i can think of i feel like it would be also more considerably risky especially in uh gta where the you know the original grounds were it's okay to be immoral you, you know you, you can do some fucked up shit you know, uh, you get bored one day, you, you try to uh, get five stars and send the tanks in, and then you die and you start from the hospital. So the idea oh, that yeah. you're trying to do this chaotic yeah. thing. Yeah, so with the, with the role play servers, there are very strict uh, rules a lot of the times, and the people who own these servers and do a lot of the actual coding, um, uh, they, they set up a bunch of rules that the government has established. So, like, there's a server that I played on um, where you could not take any vehicle off-road unless they were an off-road vehicle. Otherwise, that's a bannable offense or a jailable offense, I believe. <laughs> Um, and so they are very strict about enforcing some of these rules on these servers because they want to keep that immersion intact. And so, uh, me and my friend Dustin joined a server, um, and huh, uh, I, I hope the audio listeners are going to enjoy this, but I played a, uh, uh, fresh off the boat Indian cab driver who, 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 because I'm like, it's my first time properly RPing. So might as well play. As a play uh, natural, huh? I, no, exactly. Right. So why should I sit and struggle with a character that I might not be familiar with or like character traits when I can just talk like this all the time and then, you know, pretend that I came to America to find a beautiful American wife and just yeah, have yeah. a good life. Yeah, and two options is like, a cab driver or a 7 Eleven manager. And you, you fucking or, took that or like tech driver. support or tech support. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you did that, you didn't have to. You, I feel like you'd be like premium tech support if you're going to be over. This uh, is you know. loud. Okay. This is allowed. I'm Indian. I can do this. But <laughs> beyond that, um, it's exhausting, Tyler. Honestly, RP. Um, it's especially at this level. I feel like that's a Disney song. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> um, just because you have to be in character all the time. And when you establish your character in a certain way, it's very easy when something happens to devolve back into your natural way of, you know, normal way of reacting to things. And I have to stop myself from doing that. Right. Like my character um, is very much very traditional, comes from like a small, like rural uh, village. And so, um, you know, he doesn't really swear a lot doesn't really like he's he's not used to 
the um, the amount of skin that American women show, shit like that, right? And but then when when we get like hit by a car, I'll be like, oh fuck, and stuff. So like, no, I can't say that. I can like then I have to play it off and be like, I'm terribly sorry for uh, using such language, sir. It, it, it was unbecoming of me. Shit like that, you know. So how does money transaction work in this game? Is there any actual money transactions like uh, between players or whatnot? It 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 depends on the server, the server rules, and the jobs. Um, so like the server we joined, uh, you can sign up for a, they have a list of jobs and every so often you'll get, um, a little bit of money deposited into your account. Hmm. Um, and that'll just sort of help you start off. Right. And I believe a lot of servers do have a little bit of money that they give you so that you can start off. Um, I'm now just because- saying, Rockstar, when you play their online, give you like a billion dollars right now in startup cash. So, I mean... Just saying, maybe official is the way to go. I, I, I'm full of shit. Nick. Go ahead and keep going. Yeah, no, it's just <laughs> so. Um, in terms of between players, um, this is where this is where it comes down to like real life, like RP, right? They, they, they. A lot of the server rules, they have like a list, like they have Google Docs, they have Discord uh, forums where they have all their rules posted, and a lot of them is like, well, pay, like, like imagine you were in real life like do the rp pay people uh give them the money and stuff like that and then when you don't go into money you're in debt and then so if you're you're in debt with the wrong people you're going to be constantly running around afraid because they they're probably part of the gang or they're cooking meth it's um you know it 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 goes it's it's uh, we joined a fantastic starter server and i'm excited to actually dedicate the time for it eventually hmm. i'm uh i'm excited to see how this progresses please keep us updated I'm I'm hopefully I haven't tested it out yet, but hopefully I'd be able to stream it and I'll be back to streaming properly in a few weeks. Um, uh, because it's I've I've needed something that's not a shooter or or like at least constantly playing a shooter. I just needed a I just need a break, and so this has been really nice because the game's been at, is at the lowest it's ever been, uh, thanks to all the big streamers bringing a lot of uh, light and popularity and like bringing GTA Five back a little bit in terms of popularity. Like the online population has been very active, so like they've been dead, but it's gotten a bit of uh, a, a bit of fresh air. Um, but yeah, that's me, Tyler. That's awesome. That is the games we've been playing this week. Holy shit. Yeah, like I, 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 I mind boggled by VR over here. <laughs> just I, I, I've noticed. I've noticed. I'm. I'm just. I'm just happy to show some sort of um, um, transition. Some sort of variety in the games that I've been playing. Um, yeah, I mean that's a hell of a jump for you. I, I'm. Yeah. really glad that you tried something new. I mean, to be fair, I kept playing. You know, Terraria, 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 and then it's like, oh, Ocarina of Time Randomizer, and then I right. jumped into that. I almost and I might you know I might scare a lot of people when I said this, including my wife. I almost got back into the RuneScape, but then I realized that I would have. It was like, oh, the last thing I was doing was smithing. And it's like, oh, I got to cast super heat on this item, uh, you know, twenty eight times, pull from the bank, and do that again, and then do that for about forty hours. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do this. Uh, I got better things to do. And talk about right. how I get ninety nine smithing on RuneScape. Like, it, it, you know, what's the nice thing, Nick? What? I could fucking lie. <laughs> I got nine and high smithing and RuneScape, guys. <laughs> it's not nice, easy. Tyler. Good job. And thank um, you. Uh, and I'm going to stop playing RuneScape. You know, I spent a lot of time on it. It took a lot of effort. And, you know, I have no one to show it off to you. I'll just, right. if somebody were to ask for proof, I would just Google Smith and Cape and just send <laughs> you a screenshot of that and then just put my name in. Honestly, it does not fucking matter. And so right. I really there is no joy out of doing that i have no use for smithing if i were to play that game seriously i just wanted you know to get a number up to 99 and that was the one i was working on which explains why i quit so right uh, right i put that um, to the side so in terms of games over the next few months um me and tyler talked about this we're still in discussion about it whether it'll happen um but borderlands with borderlands 3 being announced i do want to give borderlands another go uh, because it just never pulled me in the first time um and i want to see whether it was the the period of my life where i played that game that didn't pull me in or whether it was the game itself not that i have anything against the game i can appreciate how insane have- the game's been um sorry i said i have so much against that game it's not worth a man jump which, the ship which is fine but you'd be like you'd be like one man swimming against a million uh people 
I mean, right now, if uh, if everything what you're saying is true, uh, people are not uh, too happy with Borderlands at the moment. So, no, uh, uh, which is a good segue into our topic of the show, modular segment. But it's not that people are unhappy with Borderlands; it's just people are. <laughs> this is where I over exaggerate and I'm just mean spirited for no reason. But people are stupid, Tyler. People are stupid. No. I, I think you might be, as you say, a little over exaggerating. Um but sincerely, alright, so so the the topic of the show is is the competition that Epic is bringing to Steam. Um uh so with Borderlands 3 being announced, um, you know, a week ago. Um with Borderlands uh, 3 being announced a week ago. No, I just lost my uh, train of thought. Um, and they shortly after the announcement, they announced that um, Epic has bought uh, exclusive rights to sell the game on their store till next year sometime. Um, and a lot of people aren't happy about it. Like a lot of people were not happy about it. Uh, so much so that to show their disdain for such a move uh, for, for this business decision, um, um, thousands of people uh, left negative reviews on on borderlands 2 i believe um to give it a uh, overall not, not so great review um which is which is which i which i don't think is is right um tyler can i ask you for how you feel about this it's weird because okay not specifically about borderlands but like the the exclusivity of games on different platforms I would like to do some uh, clarification for uh, people who might have heard this from other sources. Uh, I've heard from some people that uh, the exclusivity deal was for one year. And, you know, people are like, oh, I got to wait. Well, it says right here that it's going to be for six months. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, oh, that I, is. I, I think one year because we're so early, technically still so early in 2019. And when they said it's going to last till 2020, despite the game not coming out until September, I think people are just, you know. Um, so. For Epic people, they would have to wait six months, whereas right now, for Steam people, they would have to wait a whole year from now. Yep, pretty much. It, it just sounds like it's kind of misconstruing for the people who aren't on the top over that, because that detail is often very quiet. But, uh, damn, man, uh, if if I had my favorite game and it was on Epic, I mean, the, the okay, okay. And, and Brandon did leave us some comments about this, but let's not talk about um, the UI or the Epic Store um, as 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 a software and how good it is. Uh, let's just first talk about having exclusivity, uh, exclusive games on different stores. What is how does that sit with you, <sighs> Nick? Not it's not one to one, but when I heard about Breath of the Wild. We were excited for it to come out for the Wii U. And it, it did come out for the Wii U. It, it eventually did. However, there was going to be a clearly better way to get that. And in order to do that, we're going to have to jump on a completely different platform that may or may not bomb completely, known as the Nintendo NX, which eventually became known as the Nintendo Switch. And it was frustrating because i told myself i'm not gonna get that nx thing uh yeah i just want to play breath of the wild let's get on the wii u and i had to really really you know push myself if this is a game that people are that excited to play nick i don't think it matters whether or not uh you know the platform that's going to be on uh that being said we do have special snowflakes on the internet that have to have it their way because they think the whole world is burger king and Wait, do you have Burger King in Canada? Asking for a friend? Yes. yes. Thank, thank goodness there is a god. Garbage. Uh, the fuck you I just... Take that back. Burger King is garbage. It only costs $125 for me to refund my entire plane ticket. You won't do it. Wow, we're having dead silence. Over Nick? <laughs> I'll take you to Burger King. You can get some food from Burger King. I refuse to get food from Burger King because I think Burger King is ass. Okay, we're going to put Borderlands 3. I'm going to put a little pin in it. I'm going to... Scoot it to the side of my virtual reality thing. Nick, what what do you have against Burger King? I have a thing against most fast food places in North America because back home, um, Burger King would kick... Uh, Middle Eastern Burger King kicks uh, North American Burger King's ass. The burgers are bigger. The burgers taste better. Um, the, only, the only complaint would be that you wouldn't be able to get actual bacon, but that's nothing in comparison to the fact that the Burger King burgers here are small. The sauces are ass. The only thing good at Burger King is the chicken fries. And most of the time, they're overdone too. Okay, so I'm going to take Borderlands 3 and scoot it back in. 
All right, so Borderlands 3. <laughs> I don't have a rebuttal for that. That's your opinion, man. Listen. I, I, I'm listening. I'm, I'm here. When it comes to food, Let's my head is pretty low usually. Um, and chair, I don't, right? as long as you're not hurting anybody, I don't care what you eat. Um, and I have an opinion, and I'm an asshole, and my opinions don't matter. But I think most fast food here is very, a very low quality for the stuff that I'm used to and that I grew up on. Um, and I wish I could explain that in a way that was more feasible, but I can't bring any fast food back with me. Um, because like, for example, like you, you know, you go to McDonald's here and you just feel like ass after eating McDonald's because of how greasy and you're not sure what exactly you ate because of like mystery meat back home. Uh, there are just standard un universal health laws um, or health and safety food hygiene standards mm. where if you don't follow it, you're getting a fine and you're shut down. Whereas in North America, as far as I understand, there are different levels and you just have to meet a minimum standard. And because a lot of these are franchises, quality is not the same across through like across all branches. And so I've never had a fantastic experience with Burger King here. But back home, their Texas barbecue smokehouse burger is fucking fire. Nice. Good deal. Uh, also, fun fact, over in our region for McDonald's, uh, they are now using fresh patties for the quarter pounders. Apparently, they didn't say for anything else. So I guess, you know, the, only the quarter pounders are fresh beef now. But that's a manka S. Um, is that I don't what the fuck is a manka S? Is that good? Is that bad? It's it's a it's a it's a Twitch uh, emote through one of the uh, chat extensions, BTTV. Okay. Um, and it's basically Pepe the Frog and just sweating. So, like, you know. That's um, spooky, I guess. Spooky, that's okay. scary. Um, okay. that's... Like, it's like, um, um, oh, if you say something, it's like, no, if you say something, the cops show up. It's kind of like you're sweating. It's You're nervous. You're anxious. Ah, okay. Uh, you, so, you, you always say manka ass. I'm like, what? The... Yeah, it's a habit now because I just, like that's what we tell. Like if you know, if you're playing a horror game and you're walking down a dark hallway and then you hear like a lo lo loud bang behind you, that's a manka s. That explains a lot because uh, when I watch somebody uh, playing, uh, I'm going to bring Ocarina. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to put no, a fine, head fine. back in the Borderlands series and move right back out. Uh, Ocarina time randomizer. When people are streaming it, they'll just walk into like a normal tunnel or something. All of a sudden, it starts playing the final theme for Ganon, and everybody starts manka essing because it's yes. like this. Yeah. Be, okay, I learned something. Manka hey. s. Yeah. Cool. So um, um, there's two pins now in this Borderlands <laughs> three topic. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull both of them out. I'm gonna move them back in. I don't. Oh, sorry. I don't have my uh, PlayStation Move controller, so I can't. I got to move it with my hand now with the controller. That's okay. That's okay. Nick, let's let's talk about Borderlands three. What's going on here? So, so it's not specifically Borderlands three. Or like Borderlands three is just what started this discussion. So when we, where we last last left it, I asked you what you just thought in general about exclusivity, and I want to remind people that games have been on fucking different exclusive consoles and a lot of people when they're arguing online which is not the place you should be doing it anyways uh seem to be forgetting that where if you wanted to play a particular game you had to pay at the very least a few hundred dollars to be able to play that game with uh, not even forgetting the fact that you had to pay for the actual game itself right because it was on a completely different system and now we come here where you have free softwares that you can download to get different games right. and so that's that's one argument on my end um where it's just you're just downloading free software um, sure, it's taking up space. I can understand that. Um, and Brandon, I believe, let me just read through his comments here. He just doesn't like using the uh, Epic Launcher because I agree. It is a very janky um, sort of uh, launcher. It's it's not very user friendly. It was very confusing when they first updated it to like its current state. Right. Um, I prefer Steam because Steam, uh, maybe because I'm older, it has that old school, like, you know, like, uh, pre 2005 kind of look and it makes sense uh, to that it was you. There when you had your first child right. program um but then you also have to think about steam has been around since 2003 um competition is good at any shape or form competition is very good and epic has surpassed what anybody thought anybody could do like with within such a short amount of time the amount of money they generated uh the fact that they were able to launch their own uh store uh with exclusive rights in such a short period of time um 
I I I'm all for Epic doing what they do, and I also can't blame developers going to Epic because they get to keep more money. That is true. I mean, especially for uh, start. I mean, this isn't like a, a startup uh, developing team. This is fucking Gearbox, which uh, uh, their, their latest uh, discussion on the news has uh, been weird enough already, involving uh, <laughs> Mr. Magician leaving. You know. <laughs> Porn, it's magic on a flash drive at a medieval's times, but you know that that, that that's whatever. I wonder, Nick. Yeah. Let's. Uh, for some reason this thought stuck to me in my head. Let's say yeah. like a year or two before Steam came out, there was something similar that did the same thing, except uh, instead of being commercialized, it was like a uh, a free license to post your game here, and it was a platform almost like Linux style. And right. Maybe, for all I know, maybe this exi- exists. I know there is a competitive, uh, well, competitive is such a loose term, like uh, itch.io kind of stuff where you could, uh, you know, have your own store where people could post their game on there through, uh, you know, the PC and there was little to no money taken away. Right. Like, it, it was a free enterprise before it got commercialized. Uh, do you think Steam would have overran it when it came out? Or do you feel like uh, the way the games are being you know, pushed out on the PC would be different? Just a free marketplace at this point. Uh, n- no, because Steam offered so much more. It offered security. It offered, it offered you know, uh, security in terms of um, refunds, uh, buyer's protection, helping True. protect the company. Um, it, it provided forums, a place for people to talk about it for free, right? R- like really, the only place Steam is making money is when the games are being sold, right? It's facilitating. Facilitating cloud saves, uh, being able to like have a uh, login to the same account on multiple platform on multiple devices and download your games there without having going through going going through a whole process, right? Because it has your, all your login information stored through a centralized place, um, and so I th- and also Valve was running off uh, a lot of hype at the time, you know, based on the games they made, and so they had the capital to be able to smother any competition. Sure. And none of this is really at the expense of the customer. Uh, we don't got to pay anything to use Steam. No, exactly. Uh, you don't have to pay anything to use Steam. So to, we- to, to use Origin, to use the Epic Launcher, to use Uplay. You don't have to pay anything to use all of them. But I hate the way Origin is. It's it's very janky. It's not properly optimized. I hate the way Uplay is. But Uplay, is, in terms of using, is not that bad. I just don't like having that many launchers, which is the only valid slightly valid point that i can see anybody making but it's not like it's doing any harm and epic is also just very janky i don't like it hmm. just a heads up uh people who have you play points uh points you get for uh purchasing ubisoft games and whatnot they're actually starting to expire they uh there's a possible potential use for you play points in the future that ubisoft has not discussed yet but they uh, realize that they don't want people to have thousands upon thousands of points that are just sitting there for years that, you know, maybe they're going to start to push it towards discounts and games or something like that. So right. uh, start checking your points and see if they uh, expire soon, because that is going to be rolling out starting very soon. I believe might have been this week, if not, you know, more recently. Right. So so with the whole Borderlands 3 thing, I just think yeah, it's back to Borderlands, the third I, thing. I, I just think it's unethical that people are so upset about having to download a free launcher to play a game that they love. It's like I can understand if people are upset that um uh, like let's take Destiny as an example. Uh with with the with the whole PlayStation, uh, the Sony and Activision deal, uh Destiny 2, Destiny 1, there were a lot of weapons that were only available on the PlayStation uh, despite PlayStation, Xbox and PC paying the same price and we'd only get it about a year and a half later. That's a valid reason to be upset. Question. Yes. When it comes to let's let's use uh, Epic Launcher and Fortnite as an example. Yeah. Can I put a Fortnite shortcut on my desktop? Honestly, I don't know. I've never tried. I, I couldn't answer that question. Okay. Uh, let's say hypothetically then, yes, you could. If I could just have Borderlands 3 as a you know a shortcut on my desktop and it just it opens up the Epic Launcher automatically and then launches the game, I don't see the problem then. You know, that solves that problem. You know, it's like, yes, you got to install Epic. Oh, no. Then it just sits in the background for all of eternity for you to not notice hopefully yeah no, that's that's my point it's like it's like people complaining that uh they have to go to different stores to buy clothes it, it's it's like it's like that's forbidden uh, i only go to goodwill and goodwill only thank you very much it doesn't cost you anything to walk into the store 
you don't I mean, have to buy yeah. anything. But it, the cost is uh, it's a strip mall, right? You don't. It doesn't cost you anything to go from store. Okay. To oh, store. it's a strip mall here, uh, right? Um, if Amazon uh, has I, virtual reality, I could just. I, I, I really it. don't understand why people are so upset. Like the only way I can understand it, as Brandon said, and I mentioned it again several times, is a purely a user experience point of view. But beyond that, just the fact that you have to open up a different software to run your favorite game boggles my mind, especially because people are, I'm a, I'm guaranteed that people will be so upset that they're willing to wait the six months and refuse to play their favorite game series of all time just because it's not on Steam. I'm guaranteed there are going to be people like that. Yeah, yeah. Which is stupid because all you have to do is spend five minutes of your time to download a different launcher, pay the money, and get your game on a different platform. Now, uh, I wonder, could uh, being on a different launcher uh, cause effects on future like uh, DLC or expansions? Do we know like uh, the time it takes for uh, it, something to get green lit on Epic versus Steam? Um, no, but I would imagine from a development point of view, once it's out, it's out. And so you have to standardize it across all platforms. For example, within the six months that it takes for Borderlands to come onto Steam, let's say there's already a DLC for Borderlands 3 and it's already out in Epic. So when it does launch for Steam, it should come with all the, you know, with all the options. And so if it's already on Steam and Epic, and so when there's a when there's a DLC that comes out, it should launch for all platforms. Mm-hmm. Right. It's that that's never happened with um, any, any major game as far as I'm concerned, um, where it's on multiple platforms and there's a DLC. Um, it only comes out on one. Um, the only thing I can think of is, I believe, um, Monster Hunter World, Minecraft. Where you, Minecraft. I'm not. From, we'll get to Minecraft in a minute. I'm not familiar with that. But with Monster Hunter World, it's come out on the consoles. Um, the the latest DLC. It's going to come out on the consoles soon, but it's going to be a few months until it comes out on PC. And I believe that's purely an optimization development process thing because they're not so used to making their games for PC, right? Not because of some sort of exclusive business deal. Um, so you, you're mentioning Minecraft. Uh, 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 to go into further detail, uh, Minecraft and uh, for me more personally, Terraria. Uh, they are out on almost every single platform you can think of console handheld pc and all right. that stuff but they have different varying uh patches that go to uh different uh consoles like for example there was a big uh update that's happening i believe for the pc version but i'm gonna take a guess and say playstation 4 and the switch versions probably won't see that i would i i think there it's it's more of a d- uh, development thing because if you don't build your game uh to i and this is pure speculation i know nothing next to nothing about video game development in terms of code um but if you don't build your game um in a universal way across all different platforms uh then you have different builds of your games if you know you build for pc and now you want to put your game on a console but it'll be too time consuming to to just um uh, sort of like copy paste this so you have to build like a different build so that it could come out on the consoles and so you have to patch things and change things differently uh, as time goes on and that's the only thing I can think of because Stardew Valley is like that too the PC uh, fixes come sooner than the console fixes that, that that is fair also fun fact this uh, past week I believe uh, Mojang is it Mojang or Mojang Mojang okay I always called it Mojang but uh, that's Mojang yeah. sounds cooler TBH yeah, well, to be honest, the, the translate for the older audience. Uh, fun fact: they uh, they updated. The, do you know how when you start Minecraft, they have like random slogans at the top? Sure, sure. They uh, they officially took the name Notch out of them. They uh, realized that they no longer want to be associated with Notch, uh, who's apparently been a naughty boy and saying a lot of uh, raunchy shit on uh, social media and all that stuff and has been displaying some uh, less than desirable behavior and microsoft who are now the owners of mojang and microsoft uh sorry minecraft uh i hope they're the masters of themselves uh they decided that they don't want to be associated with them i believe they left him in the credits if you were to beat the game but uh yeah notch is no longer going to be on the front of minecraft anymore unfortunate i mean you say so i mean if you there's i know nothing about minecraft so that's why i'm saying a link it just sounds like it's unfortunate yeah okay fair enough <laughs> Honestly, I wonder what it would be like if you made a game that was so popular that you became a super billionaire and then when you sold it off uh, you were so bad that they don't even want to put your name near it anymore for bad press I mean at that point I feel like I would have so much money I wouldn't care anymore but I, I suppose I would, yeah I'm going to say it's like you can call it whatever you want it's yours you can call it Notch's Ass Simulator at this point sure 
That's all right. That's, that's the whole Steam competition argument that I thought people were stupid for having even in the first place. But you know, everybody has their opinions. Uh, yeah, let's summarize it real quick here. There. Um, people are wrong. People are stupid for being angry. Okay, Spark Notes version. That's okay. Yeah. Um, that'll get you through high school. <laughs> it's a topic of the show. And Tyler, this is where you you get to fly. You get to spread your wings. Um, Nintendo VR. Nintendo VR. It is beautiful. Hey, I, I'm on VR. I'm looking at this news article on VR. Wow. Cool. So thank you, Tech Radar. Uh, Tech Radar, I've been kind of iffy when it comes to uh, like uh, the quality of their articles and whatnot versus, uh, for example, Game Informer or Kotaku or Polygon. But uh, if they know one way to make a good clickbait article, they just got to mention VR and Zelda. So let's I'm talk. Wrong, about- that pulled me in immediately. Yeah, well, it sucks because for some reason, my phone knew that I would be drawn to that. So it showed me a notification for the news. I don't even have notifications set up, but <laughs> like I looked at my phone and you know, a fucking hook shot just grabbed my forehead and started dragging me towards this article. So for those who uh, don't know, I believe on the 12th, uh, there's going to be a new Labo kit coming out for the Nintendo Switch. Now, there's been a lot of uh, kits that have been coming out over the past year or so, you know, involves cool things like making a piano or a remote control bug car thing. Uh, this time, they're going to make something called VR, which, Nick, I, I'm full of questions tonight. Can I ask you another one, man? Oh, for sure. If you take a console that is handheld and you put it in cardboard and you put some lenses on it and it has gyroscopic features, is that VR? Yeah. It, it just feels like it's so cheap for VR, man. Well, I it's, mean... It's technically VR. Uh, I mean, let's look up the definition of... Virtual uh, reality. Virtual reality. Um, the virtual reality is interactive computer generated experience taking place within a simulated environment it incorporates mainly auditory and visual feedback so the fact that you, you're tunnel visioned into the screen and you've got auditory response feedback and visual re- feedback it essentially is enough to, to count as vr especially because it's breath of the wild and the world is expansive ah uh, damn it okay i will then acquiesce to the fact that this is officially vr this is uh, technically going to be uh, Nintendo's first major attempt commercially to have a VR experience. I'm trying to remember any other time where they actually do something similar to this, and I don't think there is. But yes, anyways, the the VR Labo kit right now, it's going to come out on April 12th. It's going to have a bunch of cool features, and there's going to be two major first party games that are going to have, you know, uh, special bonuses added to it to help uh, convince people. Uh, the last time I seen this with uh, the Labo kit is they introduced a uh, a steering mechanic, a cardboard like steering wheel of some sort, and you could use it to drive uh, Mario Kart, which was apparently very awesome. In this case, though, uh, they're going to allow you to try this out with Super Mario Odyssey and the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Nick. So nice. maybe, this, maybe this is going to be the push where instead of focusing on the horrific you know terrors that is your everyday life trying to improve yourself and getting a degree maybe you can escape out to virtual reality and then just play breath of the wild this way <laughs> oh Tyler, you're so funny but, I try. um <laughs> this was this is a no-brainer honestly and it's a good it's a good place to experiment um they took the labo which i again i'm not i'm not a nintendo junkie um but i thought the labo was a cool unique way of of uh in, in incorporating some sort of uh physical dexterity imagination and video games together for children right for like it seemed like a good at home kind of like age appropriate um you know current modern like era appropriate kind of technology uh putting aside the price tag um and now they have the labo uh, and they have their first party titles and the and you have the switch um, why not take a risk and put those two together? They're all making you enough money anyways. So it's not like you're developing anything exceeding. You're not developing anything new. So you're not losing money in a, in a in an extensive development process. So what's the harm in putting these two together and see where it works out? And if, ha- if it has ground to stand on, if it has place to grow, if you see potential, you can incorporate this into your other games moving forward right from the get-go in the development process. And from the Breath of the Wild perspective, this is actually a pretty genius move because we have gyroscopic uh, camera controls already, yep. uh, especially with like uh, the arrow aiming system and all that stuff. So all they had to do is apply a small update to where 
your gyroscopic is technically active, not just when you're holding an arrow and whatnot. So I'm, this isn't exactly difficult for them to do. Super Mario Odyssey is a little bit different. Uh, also, to, to clarify, Super Mario Odyssey is going to have like special mini levels and puzzles that you can play while you know in this virtual reality form. Whereas uh, Zelda is simply going to have it set to where your camera is actively controlled by your gy- gyroscopic controls. Uh, I do want to warn, and I realized this last night, and this is what made my uh, stayed my hand from buying this immediately when I, you know, discovered the truth about this. Is this sounds amazing, but the VR kit is essentially a submarine periscope. Like uh, you are going to have to use controllers that are currently hooked into the Switch. The Switch itself does not natively have gyroscopic or any kind of uh mechanics inside the, the console itself so you're gonna have to put joy cons into the thing put this bad boy up to your eyes and then hold it there there's no strap holding it in place and then you're gonna have to play with your hands next to your ears nick well, I, yeah I can- so, so yeah like i was saying th- this purely seems like an experiment from nintendo um they're not they're not really losing any money by announcing this and like putting this in the process and putting it out um it's like, all right, here's a stupid, silly thing to do while you look stupid at home. Um, if you like it, we'll make more and we'll actually make a better headset. I'm, I don't even think that you have to uh, like buy like a, a special app or put a special thing in uh, Breath of the Wild saying, hey, I, I, I bought the level kit, so I, I want to use it now. It's it's actually just an option in the game once it gets updated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so honestly, I don't see any difference beyond just taking the, you know, your Nintendo Switch putting it really close to your eyes and then just moving <laughs> around and playing it like that. Maybe there will be special mechanics because, uh, you know, this little uh, headset that you'll make, it has, you know, a super high quality cardboard and, you know, some lenses. Maybe it'll do side-by-side view to help, uh, you know, clarify that. But this is $40 for a piece that uh, just holds something in place, I guess, the the Switch, even though you're right. holding the Switch already. Yeah, no, I, I I will agree with what you said earlier about it being uh, cheaply made VR. Um, um, but again, I will I will reiterate for the third time, it's an experiment, um, and we'll just have to wait and see how it goes uh, in terms of sales. Whether there's a, there's any actual interest, because you're never gonna get um, anywhere without actually doing the things that you have ideas for. Right? You're not gonna know until you actually put it out there. No matter how poor quality it is. Uh, you're just making a connection for these two different things that you have to meet, see if there's an, any actual genuine interest. And if there's enough interest, you can actually put effort into producing a proper like headset with a strap um, and uh, uh, allow users to be in a situation where they didn't have to hold a fucking thing to their head. It's just upsetting, Nick. Uh, I would imagine. Like, no, like I would imagine uh, for, like for the people who really care for Nintendo uh, products and the things that they do, that it just seems like there's no effort going into this. Um, I mean, I'm sure there is. It's just it, it's this is the kind of project that's supposed to spark innovation and all that stuff. But I feel like it's set up in such a way that it's just more still it's still focused on the idea of making money off of this. It's $40 uh, American U.S. dollars. Anyways, I'm not sure. It's, so that's like 300 Canadian. Uh, Probably something like that. Oh, you're screwed. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> like they're gonna say like uh, that'll be five uh they won't say canada bucks it will be like that's five dollars like wow that's like a quarter over here in the states that's great <laughs> but yeah i i'm glad that you're uh using this as an experimental example and i'm sure there's going to be some diehard fans that are going to try this i feel like the ones that have too high expectations are going to slaughter this worse than the whole borderlands 3 situation but as long as uh, the right people come in with uh, the right amount of reservations on how this is going to work, they they'll see for what it is. You know, uh, as you said, for the third and hopefully now the fourth time, an experiment. It'll be fun. Something to test it out. All right. So that's um, uh, we well, we got through a lot. That's uh, the Steam shit, Nintendo VR. I do uh, want to add one last thing, if I could, please. Oh, for sure. The the VR kit will be coming out on April twelfth but you won't be able to use the VR support for these games until April 25th. So that is two weeks for you to get your hands on the VR kit or rather let somebody else get their hands on it and tell you whether or not it's worth giving a shot or not. And then the, uh, after two weeks, the games will allow you to give it a shot. So. Right. 
Well, so I, w- I wouldn't be surprised that there's a lot, m- uh, many more games over the next few months uh, slated for VR updates. Because um, I would imagine Mario Kart seems like the obvious choice. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how that would work. Or Super I mean, Smash Brothers. Imagine, <laughs> imagine playing Super Smash Brothers in first Never person. Never read Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Uh, Super Submarine Brothers. There we go. Nice save. All right. Uh, let's go through uh, game releases. Sure. Let's hit it up. Let's see. How do you want to do this, Nick? I don't know. Why don't you take the first four and I'll close the last four unless you want to take the last four because you, you've bolded some of these and I assume you want to talk about them. Absolutely not. They were bolded when I copy and pasted them. <laughs> All right. Take the first four, Tyler. Sure. The first one is uh, Dangerous Driving is going to come out for PS4 and Xbox One on April 9th. I'm going to take a wild guess and say this is a game about driving and it's dangerous. I have no idea what this is. That's fine. Neither do I. Good. I mean, <laughs> if I saw <laughs> like a small inkling of an advertising or talk about it, then I would know about this, but uh, unfortunately, it's just not that cool. Uh, oh, sorry. I, that's right. I'm doing the rest of them or the next four. <laughs> uh Neo Atlas 1469 is uh, one of the classic Steam to Switch uh, titles coming out also on April 9th, where you play the role as the master of a trading company, and your aim is to complete the world map and fill the world with... That's as far as it goes before... Uh, <laughs> uh, or you have to uh, click on an article and actually read. Yes. Uh, coming out... Jeez, oh, all the ones I'm talking about are coming out on the 9th, which I believe is Monday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday. These are all coming out on Tuesday. Next coming up is Shovel Knight Showdown, which I can only presume is a nice updated version of Shovel Knight. If not, actually, I feel like it, when it says Shovel Knight Showdown, that is this going to be a what would what would you think? Nick? Do you think this is a uh, uh, the Shovel Knight VR? VR? <laughs> okay. VR? No, BR. no, you heard me wrong. BR. So BR. we had the same idea. Oh, dang. Uh, th- I mean, that would be cool. Uh, you play virtual reality as a hundred shovels from f- fall from the sky. Duel with up to four players and scramble after gems as your favorite heroic or villainous knight. Okay, so this is going to be a four-player battle royale of sorts. And it's coming out on everything that's console or uh, computer-related. PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Mac. Wow, uh, good on them. And lastly, and this one actually kind of... Uh, grinds my gears nick oh, yeah, why? Uh, the next one coming out uh this tuesday is ace attorney trilogy which is the phoenix wright uh lawyer games that i really love it's coming out uh tuesday for ps4 xbox one switch and pc nick i i really got excited uh playing phoenix right when it came out for the 3ds because i thought that was going to be the most modern way that I could play it and then this shit happens so i gotta decide whether or not i'm gonna drop another 30 dollars to get it on switch or pc let's be real tyler you probably will i probably will uh <laughs> this is your big break if you want to you know, give it a shot yeah. i'm i might i've heard good things about it and i believe i hope so i've been speaking wait, wait, nothing but wait. truth the okay, gospel okay. truth all right, calm down there, Tyler. Have they announced a, a new game coming out? New Ace Attorney game coming out soon? Or like they're working on one? I I mean, the last I heard, I haven't heard any uh, new Ace Attorney games games coming well, out. Well, I mean, it's not uncommon for for Nintendo to like... Um, uh, wait, this is not a Nintendo game, is it? No, this is owned by Capcom. Sorry, uh, so it's not uncommon for a lot of games to get re-releases on different platforms and updated platforms. Um, but I feel like for this and coming out on so many different platforms, when it was always ex- uh, like exclusive to like the handheld stuff, yeah. um, could it maybe be a foreshadowing for a new game coming out soon and they're just trying to generate interest? When it comes to Capcom and Ace Attorney in like the past three, four years, they've been very quiet on the releases and they'll just drop it digital download only on the 3DS. And while those games have been bangers, like, uh, oh man, uh, the latest one I believe was called Spirit of Justice, and I, I love the shit out of it. And uh, not to mention the whole uh, Phoenix Wright versus uh, Professor Layton uh, mix up there. That was another good one. Good one. Right. How, uh, back to the topic, though, I wonder, uh, they, they've been very faithful, like, to a creepy extent for the 3DS versus like the wii u or anything like that so i wonder if this is going to be their big break where they finally it's now that they're going to start to show that they can play it on nearly anything right 
this i believe they did have like the original uh the, like the trilogy sold the separate games on the wii u that you could play which was weird but you know you could do it but uh i think there's some possibility here where it shows not only could they release a new game on the 3ds which i hope they don't at this point i don't hope they just stick with the switch that they can just put it everywhere right I mean, only they, only time will tell tyler i hope so anyways uh there's four more games nick go ahead and take them away uh, so we've got Zanki Zero, last beginning, coming out on PS4 and PC on April 9th as well. Uh, Zanki nice. Zero is a survival action RPG, from what I'm reading here. It is very much a weeb game, so if you're a weeb, uh, go get it. Um, and we've got Earth Defense Force Iron Rain coming out on the PS4 April 11th. Uh, oh. so Zanki is. Zero is uh, being published by Chunsoft. Uh that, that's a familiar name. I, I feel uh, like I've heard that for name. For me, I know them for Danganronpa. For you, you might know them for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Ah, yes, 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 yes. We we did the whole Sorry, Mystery uh, Dungeon uh, a while back. It, it, mind you, it's being published by that, and they're being developed by uh, Lancarce, Lan- Lansars, mm-hmm. uh, which is a company I'm not familiar with, personally. So, um, Earth Defense Force is a uh, 3D action shooter where you're defending Earth from aliens um and that's that's really it wow um, that sounds on, familiar and then and then on the 12th of april we've got the nintendo labo vr kit arriving uh for the switch as uh, we've just discussed um and then the last item on the list here is the konami Ar- arcade classics coming on the ps4 xbox one switch and pc um on the 13th of april uh but i did some digging and it seems like it's actually coming out on the 18th of april so mm. there's a little bit of ambiguity with the release date but keep keep an eye on that that's coming out this month for sure nick i um, was kind of concerned for a second because you said konami and then i thought you're gonna say like arsade or something like that instead of arcade yeah no my tongue rolled in the wrong direction Ooh, wow you, you don't you hate it when you, you turn to dodge a boss and you, you just fat roll your tongue in the wrong direction? Pretty much all the time. It happens all the time. It's all okay. Right. <laughs> this day, this day in gaming, April 8th, uh, which is uh, the Monday when this episode will come out and you'll be listening to our butte sweet, uh, our butte, our, uh, I can't speak today, our sweet, beautiful, dulcety, voicey, bassy tones or whatever. But uh, not enjoy the fact that I've done this entire podcast in virtual reality, which is really sad for you guys. You <laughs> really miss- Maybe you should listen to the podcast in virtual reality. Just stare forward at the, the, the music player or something. <laughs> just, just close your eyes, dude, or just get your phone put put up put up but the podcast you on youtube your and eyes, stay with your head yeah um, okay sure. starting off we've got titanfall that came out this day in gaming april 8th on the xbox 360 in 2014 now this is weird because it had come out like uh i believe in may of 2014 for the xbox one but they released it later on the 360 you know uh just like hey maybe we should try to make more money with the the old audience huh we'll give you a dumb rated hmm. version of titanfall so let's figure you know have a little laugh uh this is when it came out um and then we've got assassin's creed the director's cut edition came out on steam in 2008 um uh, no. i i really liked assassin's creed the first one i it stinks because i missed boat but then i tried to get on it and uh, I found a disc for Assassin's Creed for the PlayStation 3 for two bucks. I jumped on it. It was like, nice. Uh, it turns out, though, the reason why it was two dollars, it was so scratched that uh, it kept disconnecting the game because it couldn't read the disc anymore. And so my experience with Assassin's Creed, which is no fault of Ubisoft, was me trying to play. And then 20 minutes in, I just couldn't play anymore. I had to restart the game and rub, you know, rubbing alcohol. It's so weird, Nick, knowing that there are Blu-ray games out there that weren't perfect because people are joking about how Blu-ray discs were indestructible at a certain point. It's like, ha, they'll never get scratched up. Right. Ever, Nick. Ever. I could take a sledgehammer to this thing and still read it. And it's well, I mean, entire- technically, it wouldn't get scratched up. It'd probably be broken, but it wouldn't put a single scratch on it. You, you can still take a nice butter knife to a blu-ray disc and scratched up it's much oh, no, more durable than a cd but it's just the way that we uh had that picture in our head like haha blu-ray discs are invincible well, uh, well i mean we, we have the same thing with that old like uh nokia phone the 3310 um yeah. and then i recently watched a video where somebody supercharged it where they ran a million volts through the battery tyler a million volts 
through the battery and you could see like uh like electric discharge coming from the casing of the actual phone like it was bright blue <laughs> and, and so you could see the battery meter go all the way up and then the phone just shut off and then after he was done like when he turned off the power he took out the phone from where it was standing and turned it on and it powered up tyler the fucking thing powered up jesus christ how horrifying <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I, I thought you were gonna like tell me that it, like it killed the man and then the phone turned on or something like the phone no, has. How the fuck do you run a million volts through something out of the 1900s and then it still fucking powers up? Okay, not the 1900s. It is Actually, technically no. the 1900s. Okay, I, I got that mixed up with 19th century. You're right. You're right. Disregard me. <laughs> um, Tyler, do you want to take these last few games because these seem more like your territory? Absolutely. As soon as I restart my headset, uh, because <laughs> guys. You remember when I said in the beginning how the tracking on it can get kind of weird over time? I've had to reset the tracking on this since it's relying strictly on the gyroscope for me to look forward because I slowly have to turn my head to the, uh, my left uh, about every 10 15 minutes. I had to reset the tracking on it. So don't take that for what you will. Try to watch a porn video that is 15 minutes or less or prepare to have a crick in the neck. Anyways, uh, after that, uh, Final Fantasy Origins came out for the PlayStation 1 in 2003. Now, this throws me off because I'm pretty sure 2003, when did the PlayStation 2 come out, Nick? Uh, do you remember the time for that? I, I I think around that time. Because it's just so weird that, I mean, I do, I, I'm i pretty sure I have Final Fantasy Origins, which is like a collection of games last I re, you know, remembered. But PlayStation uh, 2 came out in 2000. So I don't know what's going on here with Square Enix. Why did they have Final Fantasy Origins? Uh, because it, it's it's supposed to be a compilation of the first and second Final Fantasy game that comes out for the PlayStation. Even though this is three years after the PS2 came out. I have no idea. This is a question I probably would never get an answer to. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. Jesus Christ. How oh, fucking know. dare you? I know, right? Uh, coming out uh, in 1994. We're going way back now uh, instead of 2003. Neo Geo sees Windjammers, which is... I'd like to think uh, a pretty big and popular game back in the heyday. I hear, you know, when uh, Windjammers came out or got re-released or got its sequel, people, were, you know, were pretty hyped, as it turns out. It's a pretty fun game. Uh, coming out in 1988, we have two games that came out for the NES over in Japan. And the first one is Donkey Kong, baby. It makes us break from the arcade system on this day, as well as Double Dragon. So, you know, a couple of good classics making the, the big jump to consoles near you. Well, if you're in Japan, it's 1988. And if you're not in Japan, well, tough luck. Tough luck. Sucks to be you. You could be in the future like me right now. I'm in a virtual reality. What is this? <laughs> oh! Um, Looking through the list, there's really nothing else of a uh, particular note. Go ahead. Find something, um, Nick. I fucking dare you. Do it, loser. You won't. You won't. Um, Tom Clancy's Winter really. Cell Chaos Theory. Wait, Chaos Theory? Yeah. Winter Cell? Yeah. What country? Worldwide. Ooh. 2005. Oh, shit. I fucked up. I found dude. something, bitch. <laughs> ah, I've been thwarted. Oh, no. I look around and all I see is darkness because I'm in virtual reality. Whoa. I'm probably staring at my dog crate right now, but I all I see is the abyss because I've, I've been fucking loser. You've been banished to the, sh or the shadow realm. <laughs> Nothing personnel, kid. <laughs> um, no, but beyond. Oh, uh, Midnight Club Two got its American release um, in 2003 on PlayStation Two. Um, uh, f funnily enough, I, I learned a fact about the Midnight Club yesterday. Midnight Club was an actual um, uh, underground racing organization in Japan. Nice, I did not know that. Uh, where uh, obviously legal street races, but um, they were formed on the basis, like their ultimate rule was that they would never let um, harm. Uh, come to a civilian and so they disbanded in the 90s or the 80s I believe when a civilian was killed during a race and so they just stopped existing because they broke that rule and they're like alright that's it we're done it was a good run damn damn that, that, that sucks I mean, it's honorable it sucks. I, thought, I thought that was really interesting that like there's, there's, a, there's a surprising amount of games that are based on like facets of real life that a lot of people just don't realize mm -hmm. Um, but yeah no, that was episode 46 uh, nice. I think we did pretty good. We you uh, we are your fucking champion, and we appreciate the heck out of you. Um, and we're gonna start wrapping up. Tyler, where can people find you online? You can find me in uh, virtual reality 
<laughs> just surfing the landscape, slowly tracking to the left one centimeter a minute. <laughs> or you can find me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Am I speaking to the mic? Yeah, I am. Uh, on Twitter at, at two times Tyler. Where can we find you, Nick? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash LR Warrior 11 or on Twitter and Instagram at LR Warrior 11. Um, you can find the show, Casual Master Quest, on Twitter at Master Quest Pod. Um, or you can also email us at casualmasterquest at gmail.com. Um, send us your thoughts, comments, concerns, hate mail, nudes. We'll we'll take it all. We're we're just that desperate at this point. Yeah, we haven't gotten one in a hot minute. So you know, if you want to send your spam mail our way, just forward it. It's okay. We won't. Yeah, at this point, any attention is nice. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at Casual Master Quest, uh, where the content has been on a slow roll, but it's going to be nice and hot. And you can also find us on Facebook if you just type into Facebook Casual Master Quest. We will pop up right there. And you can hit that like, hit that follow. Um, that helps us out uh, because it gets us out to you. And it gives us more motivation because we enjoy doing this. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I've been humbled by Nick's uh, search of history. I've also been uh, my galaxy brain expanded by doing this in completely in virtual reality. <laughs> Nick, I think this was, has been a hell of an episode. I, I'm glad to be back. And I'm glad you're back, too. I'm glad we're back together. Together forever. <laughs> this is going to be a long week in Canada. <laughs> uh, I, I just, just imagine me going to sleep, and all of a sudden, I, like uh, a movie style, you just your head zooms in together forever. <laughs> and maybe, maybe like a, a, a lick on the, the ear, or some creepy ass shit like that. Ear licks are hot. Anyways, that is episode forty six. I'm Nick. That is Tyler doing this episode entirely in VR. Hell yeah. um, we've had a good time we hope you've enjoyed this uh, this episode like share subscribe everywhere you can find us wherever you want i love you all be safe and don't forget to never stop the grind we'll see you next week the intro to the podcast titled casual master quest was paid for and produced by the wonderful talent revelries music you can find more of their work at soundcloud.com forward slash revelries music or just click on the link in the show descriptions the background music is the album top 50 best classical piano music by brilliant classics you can find out more about creative commons at www.creativecommons.org forward slash license forward slash buy forward slash 4.0